Hi right, everybody, what is going on? It is your boy C4 here, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 offensive free agents for this upcoming season. Uh, we're currently, we're right now in a little bit of a dead period between the NFL Combine and the beginning of free agency, which starts in March 11th, I believe. I was going to do an individual breakdown for all 32 teams and who they could get, who they couldn't get, but I figured that amount of videos, I'd want to get it released before the free agency period starts. It just wasn't feasible, so I'm going to make a little bit of a longer video uh, where I give you, I'll give you the top 10 offensive free agents as well as guys that I think will re-sign and cap casualties. Cap casualties, for those who probably don't know, if you, well, you should know, it's just guys that you're making way too much money, aren't willing to restructure their deal, so you're just going to cut ties with them, and there's always a good chance for some good free agents to come out of that. Um, so we're going to first start with, I couldn't really find any good cap casualties uh, for the offensive free agent market. Obviously guys like Mark Sanchez uh, aren't going to be around for a whole lot longer. Obviously I think Mark Sanchez is scheduled to get like $10 million or something. Let's see here. Mark Sanchez is scheduled to get $13 million this year. Uh, you also got guys like Zach Miller, the tight end from Seattle, scheduled to get 7 He could be a nice band-aid for teams that need a tight end. Uh... Harvey Dahl for the St. Louis Rams getting $4 million. Didn't play that great last year. Um, who else we got there? You got the, the fullback, Laurent McLean. Where'd he go? Uh, he's getting $4 million for a fullback. That's kind of a dying position. Matt Shaw is supposed to get $14 million. Uh, obviously, they go somewhere else like that. They're not going to need him. Uh, Miles Austin, the wide receiver from Dallas, especially to get $8 million. Uh, so those are just a couple of the big names that jump off right away for the cap casualties on offense. But no one there's really, you know, going to be a very high coveted free agent. I don't really think, um, you know, all those are all coming on downturns of the careers. Um, so now we'll go to the top ten. Or uh, how many I got here? I got eight resigns, eight big name players that will resign. So don't even get your hopes up that your team's going to sign them. Uh, number eight is Jared Velde here for the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders have a lot of cap room and they're really trying to rebuild that franchise and not make stupid decisions. And letting Jared Bell here walk for free is a very stupid decision. They'll bring him back. Uh, number seven is Anquan Bold in the San Francisco 49ers. He's got a good rapport with Colin Kaepernick. Uh, getting rid of a guy that uh, a young quarterback's already developed a good rapport would be detrimental. Obviously with Michael Crab, so that means you already have the hopes of Michael Crabtree coming back and him and Bold and making a good one-two combo on the wideouts there. So you need to keep him there. It's pretty much the same goes for number six. That is tight end Dennis Pitta. Uh, he's de really developed into Joe Flacco's safety net. You really saw a change in the offense when he was injured for the most, uh, I don't know, was it 14? The first 14 weeks last year he was hurt. Uh, and when they, the Ravens made that Super Bowl run, Dennis Pitta was huge. So I think you got to keep on him. Uh, number four, five is LeGarrette Blunt. I think the Patriots they signed him. You saw what they could, uh, what he could be in their offense in the playoff run. I think uh, Bill Belichick's probably getting tired of Stephen Ridley and his fumbling problems. Shane Vereen's not really even every three-down back. Garrett Bunt will be that guy. You can feed him the carries, and he won't cost you a whole lot. Uh, so I think Garrett Bunt resigns. Uh, number three, or fuck, my numbers are all messed up. Number four is Rashad Jennings for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, it's obvious that Darren McFadden's going. He doesn't even make my top ten offensive players because McFadden's career is pretty much done. Man, that guy cannot stay healthy. He has very, very little value. Um, but, you know, for a guy like Darren McFadden, he'll offer you be a low-risk, high-reward type player because he probably won't cost a whole lot, and if you do get some longevity of him, he will be a productive member of your offense. But that being said, I think the Oakland Raiders will keep Rashad Jennings. It was pretty impressive last season. Uh, number three it will be Jerry Macklin for the Philadelphia Eagles coming off a of, uh, bum knee. I think he tore his, I'm pretty sure, well, bum knee, tore his fucking ACL. Uh, he'll see, the rumors are saying that he's close to signing a deal there, a nice one-year uh, deal. which will be good for the Philadelphia Eagles and good for him. Uh, to make sure that he can prove himself without having a whole lot of, uh, you know, banking a whole lot of money on him right away. Um, I don't think I don't think Macklin's going to go in there, especially with the Eagles just signing Jason Kelsey and Bradley Cooper, showing the initiative that they want to keep the roster together. Macklin will be back with the Eagles. Uh, number two is Alex Mack, the center for the Cleveland Browns. The Browns have a lot of fucking cat space, and they're not going to get rid of one of the best young centers in the league. I'm sorry. Uh, Mack's pretty coveted by a lot of teams. A lot of teams do need a center. Uh, they need that franchise center. Teams like the Colts, uh, the Redskins, guys like that, they need a center. But I think Alex Max is going to stay at the Cleveland Browns because you need a good center with their young rookie quarterback. And I'd say the Browns are going to get a Johnny Manziel or a Teddy Bridgewater or a Blake Bortles, and you need that good center uh, in the lineup, and that's why Mack will stay. And number one, Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham's not going anywhere with the Saints. They're going to have to pay out the ass if they have to cut some couple big-name players to make it happen. You're not going to let Jimmy Graham walk. I'm sorry. That's not happening. But now, jumping into the top 10 offensive free agents for this upcoming season. Number 10 is Josh McCown, the quarterback from the uh, Chicago Bears. 
filled in excellently for Jay Cutler. A lot of people thought there might be a quarterback controversy going on uh, between McCown and Cutler. Some fans want McCown, some fans want Cutler. I think he goes to the Houston Texans. Texans are going to cut Matt Schaub, uh, I think, and McCown will be the good band-aid because you get Clowney first overall, have Clowney and Watt on your defensive line, which is unfair to the rest of the league. Have McCown, who proved last year he could actually be almost an elite quarterback. He was playing very elite. I think he had like 13 touchdowns, one interception, uh, almost Nick Foles-like numbers. So I think McCown will be a band-aid till next year's draft class of quarterbacks, which is just as good as this year, in my opinion. Uh, so you get Clowney, and then next year you get your franchise quarterback. And McCown will still be able to win you some games. So I think Bill O'Brien will get Josh McCown. Another option maybe will be Matt, C- Matt Castle, but I think McCown's a little bit more talented than Matt Castle. Uh, number nine is John Asimov, the guard from the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he'll go to the New York Giants. Uh, the New York Giants were horrendous last year, and it all started with their offensive line. Uh, I already know they're trying to get a lot of their players to take a pay cut. A lot of you Giants fans, I think Harvey Dahl and Chris, or not Harvey Dahl, but uh, Chris Snee and some other dude, they're trying to get them to take a pay cut. They don't take them, they're going to let them walk. And a guy, bringing a guy like John Asimov, who is pretty young, was is a pretty good guard, uh, would be a nice pickup signing there. Uh, number eight will be Michael Vick. Michael Vick is said he wants to be a starter in the league. He's asked to go to a team he's got to start. He's not going to start over Nick Foles in Philadelphia. So I think the most logical team is the Oakland Raiders. Uh, it's the Raider. Even though the Raiders try to get out of the Al Davis, we're going to make consistently stupid moves. I think Michael Vick will going there will be able to help Terrell Pryor if you really want to still keep him on the roster and develop him into your franchise guy down the road. Uh, plus, Michael Vick will be able to come in and win them a couple games this year. Uh, if they don't go after quarterback in the draft. If all the good quarterbacks are gone, Raiders probably get something like Sammy Watkins because he's super fast, or they'll get that uh, Miami punter Pat O'Donnell because he ran the fastest 40 and put up more bench press than Jadavion Clowney. Something stupid like that, the Raiders will fuck it up. I like the Raiders too, but they're just not, not a smart franchise. So Michael Vick to the Raiders, I see that happening. Number seven is Maurice Jones-Drew. I see Maurice MJD, the name's too much of a mouthful. MJD will be going to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, with Richard, Richard Mendenhall is pretty much done. He'll be cut. So I think that with Andre Elliting, uh, they're going to need another more developed back. And Maurice Jones Drew showed glimpses that he still had some left in the tank uh, this season with Jacksonville. So I think he'd be a nice pick up there for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, number six is Hakeem Nix, a guy who has shown a lot of talent. And a lot of promise at some points in his career with the Giants, but as of late, could not stay healthy. Had a whole contract issue. Uh, I think he'll go to the Denver Broncos where they're gonna. it's already known that they're going to lose Eric Decker. So Peyton Manning needs that three wide receiver set with Wes Welker, Demarius Thomas. You need that other guy. And May- Peyton Manning will bring the best out of his wide receivers in. That's the kind of thing you need for Hakeem Nix. You need someone to bring the best out of him, and Peyton Manning will do that. And the Broncos will not have to probably break the bank to get Hakeem Nix. Uh, number five, what we got here? Number five is Julian Edelman. I think Julian Edelman will go to the Houston Texans. Uh, that, that Bill O'Brien, New England Patriot connection there. Uh, he'll fit in good between Keyshawn Martin and Andre Johnson. Be a good slot guy, uh, kind of like Kevin Wal- Kevin Walter that he used to have a couple of years ago. Uh, yep, yeah, I think Edelman will actually probably get a decent chunk of change because he had v- showed very very good hands uh, last season with Pat- uh, Tom Brady in the New England Patriots. Number four is going to be No. Sean Marino. Uh, I have two right now, two guys that I'm going to get to that could go to the Cleveland Browns as a running back. Browns are going to get one of the better free agent running backs here, whether it be uh, James Starks, who I haven't mentioned. Uh, no Sean Marino is another guy. I don't really know uh, if the Broncos are going to resign him. He had a 1,000-yard season, but that you could say was that a product of a system uh, under Peyton Manning's offense. But I think Marino is an option to go to the Browns. Uh, number three is Ben Tate. Ben Tate, I think Ben Tate will be the best running back from this free agent class. And I think the Browns are smart. They would go all in on Ben Tate. He showed that if he can get a full workload of carries, he will be a 1,000 down back. Uh, it's, he showed very, very good production behind Aaron Foster there in Houston. So I think Ben Tate should be the guy the Cleveland Browns go after. Uh, even if the Broncos don't let Noshawn Marino hit the market, Ben Tate needs to be a must uh, for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, number two is Brandon Albert, the tackle. Uh, from uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he's going to go to Miami. Miami needs help on that offensive line. Their offensive line was horrendous. Um, their play was just garbage, and that's probably why they didn't make the playoffs, is that their offensive line could not protect Ryan Tannehill. So getting a big-name free agent like Brandon Albert will definitely help help out their offense. Uh, and the number one is sticking on tackle, UG Monroe. Uh, now, I, I was really close to putting on the re-sign for the Baltimore Ravens because I don't think the Ravens are going to let Monroe go. He's one of their best oats. Offensive lineman besides Marshall Yonda, but I think he'll go to the Arizona Cardinals if he doesn't re-sign with the Ravens. Uh, Cardinals need to get that franchise tackle. Uh, their O-line is kind of a no-name O-line, so I think they get UG Monroe, make a big splash there, and help Carson Palmer, and uh, hopefully, uh, 
you know, Maurice Jones Drew. But there you have it, guys. Those are the top 10 offensive free agents for this upcoming season. As always, make sure you subscribe to Beast Mode TV for all that good shit. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying.